Dr. Jean-Luc, thank you so much for having the time and thank you so much for um, joining us in Qatar for the Qatar Robotic Surgery Center. And first we'd like to know about you and your experience in Belgium, so can you briefly tell us about it? Well, um, I'm a cardiac surgeon since a couple of years now. Um, we have uh, started our robotic program since 2001. Um, we have done almost like uh, 750 cases, uh, mainly coronary surgery. And um, so this is one of the reasons why I guess I was invited here to, um, to help people here to uh, facilitate the training center, which is an amazing facility, of course. Okay, so tell us about the, the training you just gave today. How did you find it? Uh, what were the comments of the participants and the objective of that training? Objectively, I think uh, this is a really appealing uh, training uh, because um, uh, it, it, it was meant uh, for uh, cardiac surgeons, exper experienced cardiac surgeons, who uh, had not that much uh, the experience of the robot. And uh, the purpose of uh, this training was to uh, um, open their minds, I mean, to, to any kind of uh, cardiac robotic procedure. And I think we, we have succeeded uh, in, in, in that uh, purpose because, uh, as you could see, the whole morning uh, people were uh, fond of this, uh, this device and, and tried uh, anything possible on, this, uh, on, this, uh, on these two devices. So uh, I think it's a really great uh, uh, introduction to robotic uh, cardiac surgery. First training you hold in Qatar for the for a this is the very first training actually for a QRSC. Uh, so it's a very first training. Although I, I was here with Dr. Abdul Wahed to to, uh, to have this uh, this uh, clinical uh, experience since one year almost. So in Belgium, how often or how commonly uh, used are robotics and surgeries in general, and what's the reception there for robotics? So, um, first you have to know that uh, the robot is a really wonderful marketing tool, that's for sure. Uh, so many people are coming, uh, at least in Belgium, they are com coming to the centers who have a robot uh, to be operated by the robot. This doesn't mean that they will be operated by the robot, but it, it, it is an, an argument for them to come over and, 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 and say, see if, if, if their case is, is, uh, is a good robotic uh, friendly yeah. uh, uh, procedure. Um, we usually we have in Belgium we have 23 systems uh, installed for 10 million inhabitants. This is a, almost a world record uh, as compared to the uh, inhabitant number. Uh, unfortunately, we only have one center, ours, who is dedicated to cardiac surgery. All the others. <coughs> are uh, meant to, to uh, operate for uh, urology, uh, digestive and gynecology surgery. Uh, I say unfortunately because uh, um, I wish uh, that, that um, much more centers were using this robot uh, in the cardiac surgery field and this is uh, again uh, working here and, and, and training uh, all those cardiac surgeons is an opportunity to enhance the, the uh, acceptance of such a device in cardiac surgery. So, in your presentation you discussed the shift from a three-arm uh, Da Vinci to the four-arm one. So, why the shift and how did it, were it, was it an easy shift or did it take a lot of time? So, um, we had uh, this in, back in 2001, we were one of the first centers who have uh, used this robot in cardiac uh, surgery. Uh, it was really demanding. It was a uh, demanding op operation. It was an operator depending operation. Really, we needed um, a very, very, uh, a very good teamwork uh, to, to uh, make this operation a success. And the reason was that we had the very first generation of the robot with three arms, and we needed a fourth one to stabilize uh, the the cardiac area where we wanted to suture. Uh, the, 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 let's say the memory graft onto the heart because we did it on the beating heart all of us uh, from scratch. Um, then came the and the results from this uh, experience were not very satisfactory. The results were not that that good 
as expected and this is probably why uh, the acceptance nowadays seems not to be that uh, big throughout the world. <coughs> since a couple of years, uh, actually since 2006 and 2007, a new generation arrived which is the Da Vinci S system and uh, obviously this was a tremendous uh, improvement in, uh, in the technical field because it had, as you can see here just behind, a fourth arm uh, dedicated to the stabilization of the heart as far as coronary surgery concerns and this um, implied that uh, this stabilization was uh, controlled by the surgeon at the console so with this fourth arm he could navigate around the heart and stabilize uh, dynamically, I, I, I would say, uh, to, to, uh, to have an optimal stabilization. And this, nowadays we know that this gave a, a, a really a, a miraculous, almost miraculous uh, improvement in the feasibility, the reproducibility and the safety of such a procedure. And now we can easily uh, start a training program uh, because many things could be standardized thanks to this gen new generation. So any new, any new technology like robotics it usually has its own resistance from users who are not acquainted with it. So from your experience, what are the reasons that uh, may cause the resistance to robotic surgery? Of course the very first uh, uh, fear from the patients and for the from the cardiologist also, as far as cardiac surgery concerns, is the fact that uh, we don't touch the patient. Uh, it, it is uh, almost a remote uh, operation, the, uh, the surgeons being uh, at, let's say, a couple of meters from the patient. This is true and this is not quite true because, of course, you need a, a nurse, a scrub nurse, to, to uh, handle the system. You need an assistant, uh, that is, surgeon also, at, at, at the patient uh, side. And uh, th that was a real fear, that, meaning that uh, if there was any failure of the system or if technically uh, the procedure didn't go wrong, uh, right, sorry, um, well, there, there was a possibility that the, that the patient could uh, have um, major problems. This is not true anymore because this system can be uh, undocked, unplugged really very, very, very uh, easily and fast. And in a couple of seconds, we can uh, go and convert into another non-robotic procedure. So safety is now uh, issue number one. And this has been almost completely uh, uh, eradicated as a, as a threat. And this was uh, the, the major threat that, that the cardiologists and, and yeah. patients had. Nowadays, I must say that, at least in Belgium, but I, I guess in the United States also, there is another, uh, it, it's kind of the reverse uh, situation, meaning that many patients are coming, as, like I said before, coming to the hospital because this hospital has a robot, so maybe that case will match with, with the yeah. robotic indication. So some patients have are a bit skeptical about whether robotics are as accurate as human surgeons, so what would you tell them? Well, that is not true, <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, actually, you have a magnification of, of your operative field by a tenfold. It, it is just like as if you were miniaturized as a, a very small surgeon into the thorax mm. and you, you see, you see the, the, the vessels, you see the heart as a, as a huge um, anatomical complex mm. and so you are definitely more uh, accurate for simply by the vision, mm. a three-dimensional vision. Mm. You are much more accurate because you are not anymore left-handed si uh, left or right-handed. You can play with or work with uh, uh, your right or your left hand without any problem and any, any uh, uh, side problem. Uh, you can rotate your wrists uh, three times, three times 360 degrees, which is not possible with the human hand. So if you know how to handle the system, you are definitely more accurate with, with it than a hand suture, a hand surgeon. Yeah. So my final question, uh, you opened your presentation by asking a question, is it worth investing in robotics, in robotic surgery? So what's your answer for this? Yes. <laughs> yes, because uh, 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 I was not talking about the financial aspect because this is an aspect, of course, that can be discussed. Uh, I was talking about the energy 
that, that we could uh, just give to this uh, program. And uh, of course, uh, it, it is worth uh, trying this program uh, if you have, um, uh, if you want to participate to a new project in, in surgery. I mean, I have uh, started uh, cardiac surgery um, uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, and uh, the, the, the mean, the, 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 the lead of my, my career was do uh, bypass surgery uh, to the rest of, uh, until the rest of my life, uh, every day. Now, uh, 10 years ago, robotic arrived, and so you had to redefine everything. I mean, you have to rebuild another procedure uh, concept, you have to uh, open doors that have never been opened before, mm -hmm. and this is a new challenge, and uh, so yes, you definitely you have to, to, to invest in this kind of, uh, of uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jean-Luc Janssens, thank you so much for this interview, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank Thanks you. a lot.